This is the Poco M4 Pro, the newest Poco in the M series, and here's everything you need to know about this device. As usual, let's begin with the unboxing. Up front, we have the Poco M4 Pro and the 5G. The version that we got is the 6GB RAM, 128GB storage, power black. Moving into the box, you get the SIM card ejector tool, the Poco stickers, all the manuals and paperwork, and a clear case included. Then we obviously have the phone itself with all the main specs on there. MediaTek Dimensity 810 5G processor, 33 watt Pro fast charging, 90 hertz dynamic switch dot display, and a 50 megapixel camera. More on the phone a little later, let's go further in. You get the 33 watt power adapter included, as well as the Type-C cable for charging it up. That's everything you get in the box. Now let's talk about the build quality and the design on the Poco M4 Pro. The design and finish to this is actually really nice. I like the bold approach Poco has taken. You have a matte sort of finish at the back, which nicely flows into the camera section up top. It's a uniform material. It does unfortunately catch a few fingerprints. And what's weird is also that this looks like a quad camera setup, but it's actually these two that are only the cameras here. Honestly, I'm not too sure why they've done this since there's just two functional cameras and these just occupy space at the back. I don't really understand it, but hey, there you go. That's the aesthetic for it. Uh, let's talk about the ports. So at the bottom, you get the USB Type-C bottom facing speaker, uh, the microphone, as well as the 3.5 mm audio jack. On the right side, you've got the power button that doubles as the fingerprint sensor, as well as the volume rockers. Up top, you've got the top facing speakers, as well as an IR blaster. So that's still carrying forward. We like that. And finally, on the left, you have the SIM card tray. Next, let's move on to the display on this. The display on this is actually pretty decent. You've got a 6.6 inch full HD plus dot display with 90 hertz of refresh rate, also supporting dynamic switch, which brings it down all the way to 50 hertz if necessary. The contrast level, colors and sharpness is great. It also supports DCI-P3 with a wider color gamut, very vivid and nice, pleasant viewing experience. It also has that 90 hertz of refresh rate, like I said, so it gives you a very pleasant and smooth experience uh, if you lock it at 90 hertz and navigation and gaming on this is really fun. Now, what I didn't really like about the display is the viewing angle. So head on outdoors or indoors, it'll look really great. But the second you start tilting it, you start losing the image and it becomes washed out. And something that I didn't like, again, is the sound quality. Now, it is a dual speaker system. It does give you that surround sort of sound from left to right. I did find, though, that the sound is quite tinny and it can be a little bit distracting. Not the best experience listening to music or even watching movies on this. What they've done pretty well is the software and UI. So this is running off of MIUI 12.5.1, the Poco version of MIUI, which has Poco's own flair on top. And it's actually a pretty decent software experience. So there is a fair bit of bloatware that you can get rid of, which is quite nice. And overall, I think using this wasn't much of an issue. Even the fingerprint sensor is built into the power button. As we know, this works really well. I didn't have a hard time with this at all. It was very reliable, snappy and consistent. Speaking of snappy, you get LPDDR4X 6 gigs of RAM up to 8 gigs and UFS 2.2 storage on here. The storage is also expandable all the way up to 1 TB. Now let's talk about the performance on here. How does this smartphone perform in day-to-day -day use? Well, the processor on here is the Snapdragon 810 5G 6 nanometer processor, which is super efficient in its performance, giving you the best possible experience for the given price range. This is a very power efficient processor and gaming performance on this is actually a lot of fun. Now, granted, this isn't the most powerful gaming smartphone, but playing on this, I didn't have any issues whatsoever. Coupling that with the 90 hertz of refresh rate and the 240 hertz of touch sampling rate, gaming was so much fun. Uh, as for graphics quality, you can get medium graphics with high refresh rate within Call of Duty Mobile, which is really playable and not a problem at all for me, actually. I had a lot of fun playing this and the experience overall is really great, regardless of whether you're navigating through different social media, navigating the phone, multitasking of any sort or even gaming. So experience wise for the performance, I had a really good time with this. Now on to the camera. This is where, again, you can actually feel like this is more of a budget mid-range smartphone because the camera performance isn't actually the best. Like I said, it looks like it's a quad camera setup, but it actually isn't. So you just have two cameras. The main camera on this is the 50 megapixel f1.8 and the second one is the 8 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide camera. You also get a 16 megapixel f2.45 front camera. The images out of this are pretty average. I didn't expect much coming in from a budget smartphone either. 
But the problem is that they're not very consistent. Sometimes you get very high contrast images with very oversaturated colors, while the other times you get desaturated images completely washed out with not the best colors at all, like you can see here. Now, as far as the front camera is concerned, it's also kind of high contrast in most situations and you lose out details either in the shadows or the highlights. Now, the video on this it records maximum at 1080p up to 60 fps with the back camera stabilization is really really good actually exposure was decent but again the video looks pretty average as far as the front camera is concerned again stabilization is really great also does 1080p but you can see the exposure is kind of all over the place my forehead is completely overexposed onto something i was pretty impressed with the battery performance the battery on here is a 5000 milliamp hour battery supporting 33 watts pro fast charging and the charger like I said is included with the box. This allows you to charge up your device from 0 to 100% in just under an hour. This is all thanks to the MediaTek Dimensity A10 processor that allows you to be super power efficient with it and your usage whether you're gaming, watching videos or using it for day to day multitasking. Pretty great performance. So all in all, given the price range, this is a pretty incredibly specced smartphone. You get 90 hertz of refresh rate, 240 hertz touch sampling rate, a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, the super power efficient Dimensity A10 six nanometer processor, and pretty great performance. Of course, there are some things that I do wish were better on here, but again, considering the price range, I can forgive the lack of sound quality and the camera being not the best. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, a like would be appreciated. Do let us know your thoughts on the Poco M4 Pro below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again in the next video.